Hello and welcome to this conversation today, which was organized by Kinadoc, an international platform for documentaries about a film which is currently on view in the program of Kinadoc. The title of this film is Kim. It was made in 2022. And it is about the troubled life, the tragic death and the great art of a young Belgian-Hungarian female visual artist, Kim Corbizier. My name is Gergely Nagy. I'm a journalist from Budapest, Hungary, and I will be the host of this conversation today. But before I introduce our guests, let me just say a few words about the film itself, which is now available online. Kim Corbusier lived and studied in Budapest, and she had a brilliant start as an emerging talented painter. She became pretty well known in a growing circle of people in a very short period of time here in Budapest by her fascinating, colorful, large canvases based on photographs and her personal observations about the everyday life. And also she became a kind of urban legend due to the mysteries around her family origin. But sadly, not so long before her international career took off in 2012, she died in tragic circumstances due to her growing drug addiction at the age of 27. This documentary is based on her video diaries, on interviews, and a kind of research or much rather investigation of her past by the director of this film, Eriko Kopronsei. And now let me introduce the guests of today's conversation. Eriko Kopronsei, a filmmaker, the director of the documentary team from Budapest, Hungary. Hello. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Thank you. Lucia Hishkova, a visual artist and photographer from Prague, Czech Republic. Hello. Hello, thank you for inviting me. Hello. Um, and Katy Sharashenidze, a film student and photographer from Tbilisi, Georgia. Hello, Katy. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Um, I thought that this conversation today would be not only about the personal story, but also about the social aspects of the story. But first of all, I'd like to turn to Erika. Would you just say a few words about the working process? How did you approach and handle this video material, the video diary of Kim? And why did you choose to start a personal investigation about her past? Uh, well, um, the tragedy itself uh, happened in 2012 uh, when Kim was 27 years old and I was 27 years old as well. And um, uh, at that time, uh, Kim left her uh, little camera with me. She asked me to save uh, the data from it, but I never had the chance to give it back to her. So that's how it happened. And um, uh, when she committed suicide, I was there with this uh, with this material. And uh, in in the next period, uh, of course, I've been thinking about. Uh, uh, doing something with this footage, uh, but somehow uh, I, I felt it's it's such a fragmented material that I, I, I am not able to make a film out of it. But today I know already that it, it was a kind of uh, uh, defense <laughs> from myself, or I don't know. I cheated uh, my my own. Um, I tricked my own own mind. Uh, I think I was not able to face uh, what happened at that time. And 
Around 10 years later, uh, I was working on a fiction film script. Uh, it would be my first uh, feature film. And uh, somehow Kim's story stayed with me very much. And, and I wrote her, her story somehow in this script. Uh, and finally, I couldn't uh, make it. I didn't get a fund for shooting it. And... Uh, and then uh, this this story uh, uh, emerged as something which which must be done uh, even in another format. And uh, then I started to make the documentary. I I took this footage. Uh, I started to select them. I contacted with everyone whom I know uh, were in contact with Kim earlier, um, and every. Everyone recommended someone else as well to uh, contact with. Uh, so I had very long conversations, sometimes on, on phone, uh, sometimes in person. And some of these people were okay to come and sit in front of the camera and have the conversation uh, in front of the camera as well. And um, I don't know, I was just, uh, in fact, drifting in this, in this process. Um, I wanted to get uh, closer uh, uh, to to the to Kim uh, to what happened to understand it more. So it it was it stayed a question for me, and and that's how I I found the only relatives of Kim in Brussels, and and I traveled to Belgium and tried to to go as far as possible. On the other hand, uh, it was not my goal uh, to unfold every little detail ar around her background. Uh, I wanted to understand uh, uh, what happened uh, on a psychological basis. So I was interested in her character much more. I wanted to focus on her uh, personality and, and yeah and see this uh, this being and this fate uh, as it is. Thank you. Uh, your film, I think, uh, opened the discussion beyond the personal story, opened the discussion to a more wider kind of focus. And it's hard to avoid to raise certain questions in connection with the vulnerability of, of young artists, emerging young artists who just leaving the, the uh, art education. Um, so what 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 if we um, try to get into a little bit to the to the social aspects of this story? Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I think there is a even even better today, even more today. There is a constant kind of pressure on young emerging artists uh, to be successful, to to produce, to enter the international arena. We sometimes use the the language of the business vocabulary like artists branding or brand making or artistic production uh, as if we would do it in the case of a, of a startup enterprise so there's a growing pres pressure on the artist to be successful if you're not successful enough you you are not good enough you cannot call, uh, call yourself an artist um, as if the market value or the market success is the only measure of value how do you see this kind of pressure. Do you do you do you face it? Do you see it in your environment in even in Czech Republic, in Georgia or elsewhere? Um, I'll go first if that's yeah, okay. That's okay. Okay, so in Georgia in my country, I think the moment when uh you have to um, face this pressure to be a successful artist um, comes exactly from the moment when you decide to when you decide to become become an artist uh and so uh, i was think about thinking about that and for me the main in my opinion the main reason is because uh well everyone knows uh all or everyone said that it's not uh, the easiest way to live to be an artist uh, even in a, in a financial way it's not uh, the best thing that you can make living out of so uh, even if uh, financial and everyday problems are not your main concern you uh, unconsciously know that it's not the easiest way to live it's not the easiest path to um, choose so uh, within this realization comes the risk of 
uh, wishful and uh, delusional thinking. Uh, for example, we have to be careful uh, who we choose as our role models, right? But uh, we are not. Many of uh, my artists that are my age uh, often have two um, kind of models, the best version of an artist and the worst version of, of an artist, which are so unrealistic and um, leads to so much perfectionism and pressure in their lives uh, that they just give up more easily when they face any kind of challenge. Um, for example, uh, a young movie director might, uh, who is uh, in his first years of study, might want to I know, be uh, uh, as famous as Bergman was in his prime years, which is an unrealistic tendency. And uh, well, I think that uh, this wishful thinking, this delusional thinking, uh, to conclude the answer to your question, uh, comes. Uh, from the lack of uh, analysis of an artist's uh, individualistic life, um, wishful thinking, uh, del delusional thinking uh, of how an artist should live. Uh, and um, this is uh, one of the most important reasons why artists put pressure on themselves to produce good work. Uh, it leads to all or nothing mindsets, like they have to be as good as their favorite, I don't know, director, favorite photographer, favorite musician, or they don't, they don't have the right to be an artist at all. So um, in this way, they not only put pressure on themselves, but allow society to do so as well. Uh, and um, it's one of the main reasons that I think um, the artists don't allow themselves to produce bad work at all uh so mm, yeah that's how you i mean that you mean that you always have to be perfect you always have to be prepared and you always have to produce something that is yeah uh, the lack of uh, details like you don't see mediocre artists when a young artist looks at other artists they don't notice mediocre artists that are that are not very good they always focus on the bad and good ones the worst and best ones so uh they have uh due to because of that they have unrealistic uh, expectations of how their life should be how their life should turn out uh, and um, I think that um, it was the main reason why I liked him. Um, it's realistic. Uh, uh, um, it shows real problems, what uh, challenges uh, an artist faces during their everyday life. So uh, this lack of details, this lack of um, sociological analysis of artists' role in, the, in society, in everyday life, um, leads to this perfectionism and uh, pressure to be um, successful and pressure to produce every day in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lucia, how is it in, in your environment? Um, I, I agree with Katya and many, many, many things what she, what she said. And when I when I make small research before this discussion, I found interesting fact that it's not possible in Czech Republic, but in other countries, for example, Canada and Latvia, you can get after you finish your study like an artist, you can get the status of professional artist, what helps you with the the government helps you. You 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 are not. It's easier to life like an artist when you have this status. So we don't have it in Czech Republic, unfortunately. So it means the people, the students of arts, or you you couldn't be student before you get artists. But, uh, students after finish the schools, we are a little bit confused because we have to earn money and. We, you have to start your career during the study and find the contacts in the best way, some gallery, some um, curator, or I don't know, uh, the investor in the art, some collector who supports you or helps you with, with the starting. And I think it's, it's not too easy in Czech Republic because we are a really small country and the there's not too many collectors who can support you. And 
but uh, on the other hand, the good good things are small galleries or collectives who helps these young artists. They offer you um, make your own um, exhibition, and you can show your work and find these um, supporters. So that's my my opinion. On. Okay, so it's it's not it's not also a, it's not only an inner pressure. It's also a pressure coming from the institutions. Uh, if I understood you correctly, you referred to certain experiments of of some countries to provide um, an unconditional guaranteed minimum wage to the artists, right? You you do you think it's a good idea? Ireland, Germany, some some countries experimented with this. I think maybe in Europe, Ireland went uh, further in this experimenting and, and that's that's a governmental program there to to provide a certain minimum amount of money every month to to artists no, in order to get by not exactly this i found that uh, you get something like when you employ you are not um, you don't have to pay for uh, health health issues oh okay yeah healthcare sorry sorry for my english for everyone no that's okay so so support for for this uh, from this side okay um, how to better so, explain so giving it a, so giving giving a certain kind of protection to to this vulnerable uh social group mm -hmm. okay we touched upon the subject of um of um of the of the position of the artists i don't know how is it in in your countries and in your societies but here in hungary we still have that kind of uh, um, problematic myth of 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 the artists um like like the individual lonely artistic genius who must suffer in order to create values artist is working from his or her emotions mind and body and suffering um, and this kind of suffering sometimes validates his or her art. What do you think about this this um, this myth of the artists? Here in Hungary, we still we still face it. Um, I can say that in Georgia we face it uh, too. Uh, my I myself face it on a daily basis as well. Uh, and to be honest, um, well. I know that uh, this idea of suffering and sacrifice that you have to sacrifice something in order to be good at um, something is a bit exaggerated. Uh, sacrifice uh, exists in uh, every endeavor, but uh, in artistic endeavors, it's exaggerated in our culture as well. But um, to be 100% honest, this, uh, this uh, I know, ideas affect me so i know that it's not logical uh but they st still affect me and um some part of me still believes that it's uh sacrifice is crucial to an art to art to your art and uh you can't be a good artist without suffering and i know that this is a um, cultural thing and not my opinion uh but i still can't escape it at this moment in my life and uh the people that i know other artists are in the same situation as well so i can say that it's very present in our um, culture as well and not only in art, for example, it's uh, romanticized in science as well, the lonely scientists, it's everywhere, you can see it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Erika, do you face it in, 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 the, in the world of the cinema, in the world of the film, this kind of, this kind of uh, uh, 19th century myth of the, of the lonely genius who is, who is suffering and, and fighting and, and making sacrifices in order to create values? Well, maybe less and less, and uh, the genre itself, uh, the filmmaking is always a, a, a group a process. So I think in filmmaking, it's it's less present uh, because um, uh, because it's not uh, around one 
uh, individuum uh, only. Of course, there are different roles and there is a kind of hierarchy in the crew, in a film crew, but uh, basically it's a, it's a group work. So that's why I think maybe it's, it's less possible, but, uh, but that's true that um, uh, it existed uh, in a way and, and I could see some directors uh, who, who, who were uh, involved <laughs> a bit in, in this. Uh, but I think my generation already and, and maybe the next generation uh, is a, has a bit more healthier um, approach to this mm -hmm. activity. As, as, as for healthier approaches and as for health as such, um, I think this kind of positioning of artists also means a little bit lighter and easier attitude toward, towards certain substances like alcohol use, like light drug use, uh, which is kind of still okay in, uh, in, in certain, certain um, circles and up to certain extents. Um, in Czech Republic, in Georgia and in Hungary, I think alcoholism and this kind of substance use it's kind of a pro problem in the society. How is in the artistic circles today? What, what, what do you see around yourselves? Uh, if I can start, in yeah, general, in Czech Republic, Czech Republic is unfortunately famous for drinking beer and alcohol. So every country know, know about this alcoholism tradition. And uh, during my studies, and still I'm surrounded by uh, students of arts uh, it's at the beginning i think it's at the beginning you 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 need to meet people so so you go to the pub and discuss about the work about the um, about the art and it's support to to make connections so using this this um, alcohol or other thing like that it's for to better get to the social life i think because many artists are introverts or there's there's few there's introverts so it's helping thing and sometimes there's a stereotype you can think that you get better idea or you are more Mm, how to say it you don't feel the fear when you are on drugs or alcohol so you can make bigger things or suffer more and creating something uh, deep, more deep when you use mm -hmm. something like that if i can say it like you this. you can get better ideas you can be more creative which is uh, totally uh, stupid yeah but well, yeah, that's yes. that, that, that may, that may, maybe that's also part of this kind of myth about the artist. Uh, in order to open your mind, in or in open to in order to to act and 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 create more freely, you need a substance. You need something. So maybe this kind of more uh, permissive attitude towards the the alcohol and drug use uh, comes from from this um, aspect, right? Uh, I think that in some cases it can um, also be a sign of overpressure, overpressuring yourself and escaping from this pressure, um, artistic pressure in this case. So, so you can be comfortable and don't think about how your art is perceived uh, when you create it uh, while you are affected um, by any substance. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Erika, how was it in the case of, of uh, Kim Corbusier? Uh, because she, she had this kind of troubled childhood, this, this uncertainty about her origins, but also she, she put some pressure on herself uh, in order to create. And, and like, like uh, Kathy just mentioned, she kind of mm, be became part of this constant um, escaping and running and, and going forward in order to in order to create something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the context itself is given and uh, and um, 
everyone has to face with with the same dangers and uh, some personalities uh, with some given backstories uh, are more much more uh, vulnerable for this in this environment so maybe for those who have a very stable uh, uh, psyche and um, who are very stable mentally uh, uh, they can deal with these uh, difficulties and and uh, it's not that big problem for them but uh, as as we all know uh, it's quite rare that someone has that perfect uh, background uh, and stability and uh, kim was uh, actually extremely uh, traumatized and injured um uh, at many points in in her life uh, starting with her childhood uh she was not even one year old uh when her mother committed suicide and she just got to know about it uh, when she was 18 years old so yeah unfortunately uh she she had a very un unstable uh, life and uh she she was um the perfect victim of of, of this uh, environment she get into so there are many many factors yeah obviously and um i think this also raises the question of the structures around around us the structures the institutional structures around and artists and around ourselves some said after watching your film that this would have happened differently today that today both uh teachers students in a university react more sensitively to these kind of issues um, more aware about these kind of issues and some said that there, today we have mechanisms in education in university system which give warning signs if someone is in bad state burnt out or struggling with with mental health problem is it true that today's situation is different at least here in hungary uh, than the situation like talent. well uh i i teach uh in uh, the metropolitan university i teach animation uh, students and we face uh, this problem very often so um i don't know majority of the students have some mental issues not not like kim's head uh maybe different ones uh but uh, yeah, some of them we can see that uh, this semester uh, they were more depressed. Uh, uh, something happened, but of course we see only the the top of the mountain, the surface, uh, and it's um, I don't know. There are no too many tools, uh, to be honest. Uh, as I feel uh, as a teacher, uh, when I meet them once a week. Uh, uh, in, in the semester, there's no too many tools to uh, uh, to deal with this. So we can just be empathetic and and maybe ask that what happened uh, if we see uh, that something is not okay in in their work. And uh, yeah, sometimes they share, sometimes don't. But yeah, I I don't see that there is any uh, built-in uh, mechanism in this structure which which could help um, in this in these problems. So I don't know how different it is, but uh, maybe maybe at least uh, it's not that trendy anymore uh, to to die for for the. Uh, for the artwork uh, well, so yeah that's that's important i think yeah right? this this, but, yeah. this rom romantic uh, vision is, is this romantic characterization of the much there of the, anymore um, yeah artists yeah. Who, who dies who dies young uh, how is it in your environment uh, lucia and Katy? are the art universities prepared for for this kind of situation and these kind of people and how they handle these problems. I, I'm asking this because when I was an art student like 30 years ago, the only thing that the that the art school to, could do is is firing these people. They send them away. They turn them away and send them away. How is it in in your countries? Um, it, sorry. Um, it's okay. It's okay. You can stop. Yeah, no problem. Uh, okay, so in Georgia, it's. Uh, 
the situation is not so well because uh, the first problem is that uh, the, um, the students who um, use alcohol or drugs are demonized, uh, like they are bad people, they do it because uh, I know they are not smart enough and uh, they there is a, a very serious lack of empathy uh, towards these people and uh, not only uh, from the lecturers and the university staff but also from other students they are very quickly demonized and um, uh, that is the first problem but um, in the inner university stru structure um, I don't uh, I don't see any mechanism to help um, and solve these problems as well because um, well, uh, the first problem is that the lecturers who should um, notice and work on these problems with the students, um, I know, hold some upper position uh, during teaching. Like they uh, are not as equal as the students. They present themselves uh, so. Um, so it's very hard for students to, I don't know, talk about something personal. Um, and even if it's very noticeable that. Uh, someone um, is it uses drugs and alcohol to cope with uh, any kind of problem uh, present in their life. Um, the lecturers just don't make any comment about it. And if they do, it's just, um, well, degrading, like um, he's a bad person, he's not smart enough, they are such, etc. So it's... Okay, so uh, it's, it's more like a neutral position on is... behalf of the institution, on behalf of the teachers, on behalf of the environment, and kind of a, a victim blaming sometimes, as if you are the only person who, who is responsible for yourself. So just do what you want to do, some kind um, of thing. Yes, it's that kind of thing. Uh, oh, okay. I, I've seen many students uh, that had this problem, and um, even among these students, there is no empathy. Like I have, um, not me, but for example, if I had the same problem and my, um, I don't know, classmate had the same problem, there is still no empathy to talk about and be open enough to solve this problem in social aspect minimum. Okay, how is, how is it in Czech Republic, Lucia? I'm a little bit in shock about what Katia says, that you are, Mm, demonize if you have any mental issues or it's just when you use alcohol or something with some substances yeah, yeah it seems mm -hmm. <laughs> i ask if it's you are demonized when you you have some mental issues or when you when you use some substances I think in case of substance abuse, uh, yes, it's very demonized. But when you have some mental issues, it will depends on how you present it. Uh, for example, okay. I have dealt with some mental issues myself, but not with drug abuse. But I'm um, pretty open about it and pretty empathetic about, about talking it and um, explaining it to others. So when I do it, I... Uh, see that people are not as um, well um, called towards me as they could be towards others, but it really depends on how you present uh, yourself. I um, have this, I don't know, uh, confidence to um, not be well, but still, I know, uh, express myself, express how I feel, but some people don't, and uh, I don't... Um, have this sound always and all and at all stages on my life, but it really depends um, on how you present your mental state. Uh, but in case of drug abuse, it's always demonized. Lucy, what do you think? Okay, uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, so about the situation in Czech Republic, uh, I think it's getting better and better about mental issues. It's normalized to attend the therapist or psychologist because the generation of our parents, it was something really weird and you are not normal when you need this, this help. So I'm happy about it, that it's getting normal and normal. 
But for example, uh, an, 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 does, does an art university provide assistance or provide any kind of help to someone who is, who is dealing with mental issues and this kind of personality crisis? Our university has uh, own psychologist or therapist. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure with the, with the name. And I know that the academy in Prague, they have exactly a list of different therapists and how you have to um, acting when you have some problem. If you are, if you want to find the uh, help, they give you or you get the email at the beginning of study that where you can find these people who can help you. So then it depends on you if you are, you are in the. Uh, if you are ready to contact someone and share your if you, problems. If you recognize that you need some yes, help. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. If you recognize so and okay. know that you need the help and you want, you want, sometimes you don't or you don't have the, uh, you are not too strong. So you, you find this help in alcohol or other things or, you know. So I think the, the support is in the Czech Republic at the schools and I, I never use it like through the school so I don't have my my experience but uh, I hear about it just good things so mm -hmm. So it's a working I hope it's, system. It's working. Yeah, this this goes so. back, at least for me, this goes back a little bit to the personal strategies because we all face these kind of pressures, right? Uh, during our, our work and everyday life. And what kind of coping strategies do you guys have uh, in handling the, the pressure on an everyday level? If you don't want to talk about the alcohol, you don't have to. But, <laughs> but okay. I, I'm not thinking about you know any any kind of uh, personal strategy, uh, strat, uh, strategy to to handle these kind of situations. <clears throat> For example, I'm doing sports and making some music. That's my strategy. That's <laughs> my that's my kind of coping coping strategy when I when I'm facing uh, pressures and tensions. Mm, well, for me, it's um, journaling because it really helps me to um, be um, be open to myself, be uh, honest, and I uh, lose this honesty in everyday life very often. So when I um, reflect on myself and try to, um, I don't know, perceive the events that are happening in my life in an honest way, it really helps me. And that's the main uh, coping mechanism for me at this point in my life. Is it, is it, is it a part of your uh, artistic practice as well? Or this is something that is separated from, the, from your artistic uh, work? Um, I, I would think about that, actually. And um, I would say that it's very separated from my artistic life. And uh, one of the reasons is that I don't want to feel any pressure while writing uh, my diary. Because uh, if I feel the pressure to, I know, write it in uh, a good manner, write it well, uh, to be interesting while I, while I write it, I won't do it. So um, I just, um, it's very separate from my artistic uh, life and decisions. How is it in the case of others, of the others? For me, it's, uh, it's a sharing. It's a sharing my my opinions, my troubles with, with the friends and find a similar similar uh, cases what happened to another people. So I know that it's normal. It's not just my problem or it's normal. And I find by this way, I finding um, the ways how to deal with this or how you said the sport, the spend, spending time outside, walking, running, it helps to me. Mm -hmm. Erika? Uh, yeah, for me, for instance, this uh, the sharing is, uh, is very difficult. Uh, and uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's 
it, it was a great relief when I faced that uh, uh, everyone is uh, struggling with the same problems. It took me a long time uh, to realize this because for a very long time, even during the whole university period, I thought that it's only me. And uh, it was it was much better to know that everyone is struggling with the same thing. But uh, my uh, method is uh, meditation, yoga, and reading uh, a book because it helps me helps my mind to focus and escape from the fears and um, other bad feelings. How was it when you when you met uh, Kim? As far as I'm concerned, you you were pretty close to each other in, in the last half a year of her life. Well, Could you show three months? Yeah. Three months. Last Only. three months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it, was it possible to show her alternatives, to show her, show her something that she could do instead of what she was doing, or it was a little bit too late at that time? Uh, well, on one hand, at the time, I, I was not too conscious about all these uh, uh, pro, uh, things uh, which were going on in her, in myself as well. Uh, but, of course, I knew uh, that if someone has addic addiction, drug addiction problems, uh, uh, it's possible to, to go to some institutions. Uh, from high school time, I had a very good friend who, who finally had to go to a rehabilitation center at that time. Uh, and and since then she she was she's working there and I knew that so first I called her uh, with this problem and and sh where she uh, worked uh, she she said that uh, it's possible for Kim to go there it was a rehabilitation house uh, in the countryside. And uh, it was lucky that I knew her because uh, usually there is a long waiting list to get in uh, such an institution and she could put Kim on the first place. So actually, after we talked on phone, uh, Kim could go there uh, in some days. But unfortunately, uh, there is an, an interview in the beginning uh, and, and after the interview, Kim was uh, not accepted because they found that she is not serious enough about her problem. And uh, since uh, there is that long waiting list and there are those who are already there and want to get better, they are very strict about who they let in uh, because one person who is not that serious about his or her problem can destroy maybe others' uh, healing process as well. So unfortunately, that's why Kim couldn't go there. And uh, there was then another uh, option in Budapest. Uh, I don't know how to call how how they call it in English. A group of people who meet maybe twice a week or more times, and and anonymously they can share their experiences um, and and strengthen each other to. Uh, keep themselves away from from drugs. Uh, I went with Kim to uh, to a group uh, like this, but um, Kim couldn't really open there. And and I could also feel that she's coming from such a different uh, environment. She was an artist. She she was super free in in thinking that uh, I could. I could just feel that it's not compatible somehow. So I couldn't imagine her uh, there opening up and talking about her problem in that way. And um, yeah, the third option, or I don't know uh, which round it was already the hospital, the addictology department, uh, which can be seen in the film that finally she went there, but uh, after some weeks she escaped from there and uh, she she went back to, to the old friend and started again. Yes, I think uh, that's one of the most dramatic aspects of, of your documentary about Kim is that um, there are no um, communities, no groups of people who she could relate to at that time. Uh, the university is not, an, not anymore, 
the rehabilitation center just didn't work out. Uh, they didn't accept her. Um, the hospital is just not the right place for her. Um, the anonymous mm, uh, group is just doesn't work. So it's really, it was really hard. It's really heartbreaking to see how she just couldn't fit in anywhere and just couldn't find her place anywhere. Yeah, and I think that's why she, uh, so the only person she could feel the acceptance from is is the guy who we can see in the in the movie, uh, her friend. And uh, when she went back to him, uh, it was guaranteed that she will continue this uh, way of living because the guy was uh, on uh, methadone. Uh, so he was using drugs continuously. Um, and... Um, yeah, I think um, Kim was looking for, and basically everyone is looking for kind of acceptance and human uh, connections. And uh, ideally, we can experience this in a family, in a well-functioning family. But uh, for many of us, uh, we we don't have. And then, as Kim did, she she uh, tried to build this family of course unconsciously uh, out of her friends but uh, these connections in the adult life most of the time are not like that they are functional connections in, in a work situation so your garalist can be very empathetic and you can talk about your problem to her but uh, she will never become a mother or a sister who really cares uh, and I cannot really blame them either somehow. So it's super complicated. Mm. But I think that that was the core of the problem, basically, this lack of uh, family. Yeah, and, the, and there's, there's a moment in the film when someone who you interviewed, uh, who was close to Kim, at a certain point, she said something like, uh, there are certain persons you cannot help. When it, and it, it was like, it's just impossible to help up, up from a certain extent. Yeah, well, that's, that's also a banality that uh, if, if someone doesn't accept the help, it's not possible to help. Um, well, I um, experienced this uh, quite much, but of course, uh, I was not a mature adult at that time either so but there were mature adults around Kim as well as as I discovered so um yeah what I experienced in these three four months that I I tried the most uh, I could I could do but uh, in I don't know three we had three or four rounds uh of hope and then uh, losing this hope. And after after the third or fourth, I started to lose, uh, lose the hope that I am able to do anything. Uh, I am able to uh, influence her in any way. So in, in the first uh, some attempts, I, I had hope. Uh, I was very active, but then I started to feel when she escaped from the hospital that I I don't have more tools um, and as it turned out uh, many friends uh, had the same experience so that's why for me it's uh, it's not that acceptable uh, to to blame a certain person of course in general uh, we can we can do a lot uh, with the institutions. Uh, I believe that, and organizing uh, and and talking about these issues openly. Uh, but um, yeah, in in Kim's case, uh, I I couldn't uh, find just one element of of this very complex. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, structure to say that uh, if we change that, if if that person reacts in a different way, or if if that um, uh, I don't know exhibition is organized in a different way with different persons, then the outcome would have been different. 
I see. Um, uh, Lucia and Kathy, have you ever witnessed kind of similar or parallel story in your environment? Have you ever seen someone or knew someone who struggled with these kind of problems? Uh, yes, and I'm still witness to it. Um, he's um, my acquaintance and he uh, is studying at my university. He's also studying cinematography. Uh, and so there is a very big age gap between us. Um, for example, I'm 20 and he's turning 33. Um, he decided to um, graduate and start university career later. So um, his drug, drug addiction problem is going on for years, but um, like uh, Eric said, and you you mentioned, um, he he's not serious enough about his problem to solve it. And uh, I see it, and people around see it, but uh, I don't know how to react. And when I first um, witnessed it, when I uh, first noticed that he was using drugs, it affected me. But after two years of standing there and seeing him every day, I kind of got used to it. And I know that it's a bad thing, but I cannot do anything about it. And when I was talking before about the situation that it's demonized, I was talking about his case mostly because it's most serious case that I have witnessed ever before about this substance abuse. And maybe I've mentioned, I want to say that uh, maybe I've mentioned some details like He's, I know this many years old, but it's still anonymous. Uh, he won't be identified. So that's not, well, that's, that won't be a problem. <laughs> I see. Yeah, the, the normalization of of of, uh, of of drug use and alcohol use is, is also a problem when, when um, it's just happening and the environment just cannot react or doesn't react and it goes on the way towards normalization. Um, yes, I was think uh, I was thinking about it um, for some time every day. But um, as I I mentioned already, I got used to it. And he the problem is that he seems okay with it. He seems okay that he has this problem, and it's not a problem for him. Um, so I I don't really know. Um, um, we, we are slowly and gradually approaching the, the planned finish of this, of this conversation. And I think we really touched upon uh, deep and sometimes heavy, heavy topics and subjects. Um, but I would like to ask something that maybe um, shows a kind of uh, way out of situations like this. What do you guys think about the artistic practice itself as, as a way towards the therapy in, in cases like this? Or it's the artistic practice that they are escaping from? Can, can the artistic practice on an everyday level um, be a kind of therapy for, for people struggling um, these kind of problems? I think that it is, could be art therapy. It it's good working, but not in every case. You know, it's different on the... Not the artist uh, case. So it can work art. for people who are not artists, right? That's what you want to say. Yeah, it's true. It's true because I have uh, experience. I have a um, person in my close surrounding who making art therapists in the center for mental health and they make ceramics and something like that and the people escape from the problems and find the and the hobby or something like that and they they have a energy to live again i i think it could work like that mm -hmm. but for artists use the art like a therapy yes it could works but not every time you, mm -hmm. you see the Kim Kim example. Yeah, Kim is does, yeah, Kim is something else. It's yeah, it's a different example. 
yeah art was like a burden after after a while for her right the the constant kind of uh, pressure on herself um, to produce and to and to work yeah but also it was a passion uh, yeah. so i i wouldn't see it only in a, with a negative uh, tone so her passion was so big that it burned herself mm -hmm. I don't want to idealize, but uh, it's also true, I think. Um, just a final question regarding the film. How do you see the afterlife of this, of this film? At least in Hungary, there were lots of discussions about it uh, publicly and also personal discussions. It became quite well known and it was, it was, it was seen in, in, in wide circles. How do you see the, how, how much you're satisfied with the perception of this movie? Uh, well, uh, I really didn't expect uh, so many conversations about the movie. So it's it's always a great experience and uh, it's very good to see because for me, originally, this was a kind of uh, um, duty uh, to, to make this film because of Kim, because of my personal connection to her. And I really didn't think uh, too much about uh, what it will be able to give to others. And now uh, when the film is ready and there are screenings, I can see that it, it really has a strong effect and uh, it raises important questions. So uh, for me, that's that's always a great experience. And, and now, for instance, there's going to be a screening uh, on Sunday uh, on Telep, uh, and after that we will have a conversation as well. And I just got an email this week uh, that um, I didn't know about it, but uh, there there is a program uh, uh, in the among the universities in Hungary uh, that they choose six uh, films every year, which circulates uh, in in all the all these universities who are part of this program and the students will watch the these six films and will have conversations about it and they chose uh, Kim as well in this six so in this year many university students will will see the film as well that sounds good yeah yeah that, i'm that very sounds, happy sounds like a, an interesting afterlife and an interesting yeah. reception I think he would be happy to, to see. Yeah, sure. Um, Erika, Kathy, and uh, Lucia, thank you so much for being with us and thank you for your time. And thanks for being here. And thanks everybody who, uh, who followed our conversation. Um, if you have the chance, check out the documentary named Kim and maybe we see each other later in another conversation in the frame of Kinadoc. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.